Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Paranautical Activity. Last time, we had a very successful run with David Bowie, and, uh, wait, did we? Was it David Bowie I did last time? I feel like it probably was. No, it was the tank! Okay, I'm just spacing out, apparently. Anyway, today we're gonna be playing with Dino Might. We've got the grenade launcher to start out with. We have moderate speed, very high damage, very high fire rate, and moderate health. I feel like this is gonna be a character where, like, I'm gonna feel really happy about my situation with it. Is there music? Okay, I just had my volume down. Sorry, every single time I have to check because there is no menu music for this game, which is actually something that should probably be fixed now that I think about it. Uh, just for ambient sake, but also because it's kind of important for YouTubers to be able to check their audio levels. Of course, I could just start a game early, but you know, why would I do that when I could just immediately start recording? Anyway, uh, so we're starting off with the grenade launcher here, and I feel like this is going to be a character where it's like, you know, his starting stats are so good that if I can just pick up a better gun, then that's it. Or, we could just pick up gum and powder keg on the very first fucking floor and stick with the grenade launcher, because what I was going to go into is that the grenade launcher needs very specific items to be successful, and if we don't get those, we're going to have a shitty time, and those specific items are indeed uh, powder keg as well as gum. And uh, there they are on the first floor, so if we can pick them up, if we can get the money necessary, Ah, uh, shit, no! Okay, almost maybe died there, because <laughs> I was stuck in a terrible situation, but we're all good now. But that was, a, that was a pretty shitty place to get stuck. Anyway, don't really like the gr grenade launcher that much as a weapon. We've got 69 coins, we're gonna come in here and fight the boss. I was expecting it to be Skeleto, which would have helped us out a lot. Uh, instead, we have to fight this boss, which is actually a huge pain in the ass without gum. So I really should have bought gum first. I even had the money for it. I was just being impatient. I was thinking I wouldn't need it uh, because I was going to be fighting Skeleto. That's just like old habits, basically. I forgot that uh, this guy can be on the first floor because really like Skeleto or the whale or actually the whale is a big shitty piece of shit with this weapon as well. So I don't know what I was thinking. Let's just stop thinking about it. We're going to be fine, I think. Uh, we're doing okay though. Now this is the hardest part right now when we have three different uh, things on the screen. Please don't shoot at me. Okay, we're just gonna try to keep- oh no! Okay, that was close to me hitting myself with a bomb, but we didn't quite do it. We gotta either, like, stay far away enough that I can make the bombs explode mid-air on these guys- oh shit. Okay, we've got four different, uh, four different enemies on the screen now. This is harder than this boss should ever be, because you shouldn't be breaking both of the, uh, the main guys at once, but, you know, bombs make it kind of difficult to choose whether that happens. Okay. Okay. How did that guy die? That you, there, like no bomb exploded near that guy as he died. But whatever, it worked out. Whoa! I thought I saw bullets coming from the wrong angle there. Anyway, this is hopefully going to be the most difficult boss fight that we have throughout the entire game, as far as just execution goes. Not necessarily the amount of damage we're taking, but just hitting the boss has been an issue for us. Please, 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 just die, please. Okay, we got second to last one, just one more guy left. This should not be very difficult. Just please die. We're gonna beat this guy without getting hit as long as I don't do anything terribly stupid here. Yay, alright, there we go. That was pretty silly, I should have gotten gum before that for sure. But we do pick up the double jump, which is really nice, and we're gonna go and pick up gum before we fight anything else. Uh, because I would almost say that's more important than Powder Keg. In fact, I wouldn't almost say that, I would definitely say that, because we kill most things in one hit. So the big issue with the grenade launcher is, right from the start, can you actually make your shots connect? And for pretty obvious reasons, the gum is really important for that. You know, your shots stick to the enemy and they can't get away. Oh, and then I'll immediately miss. But, uh, yeah, this is gonna make dealing damage much easier. Oh, oh! Hit all the walls, please. <laughs> okay. Alright. This should be a fairly easy boss fight with gum. It would be a just a utter bitch without gum. Actually stuck a bomb to that lector. Feels good. Oh, damn it. That was just stupid. I should have jumped to avoid that very last bullet. But we are doing okay here. Let's just get away from that bullet. Uh oh. I might hit myself with bombs here. Nope, just hit myself with the uh the bullets from this guy. Guy actually took a surprising number of bombs to kill, I would say. We've got the crossbow here. 
I'm not going to pick up the crossbow because I don't want to abandon this uh, grenade launcher so very early. I do love the crossbow. Don't get me wrong. One of my very favorite weapons, especially in the early game. And honestly, I'd probably do a lot better with it. But, you know, I want to try out the grenade launcher. I know it's been buffed since the last time I used it, so it would be, you know, very non-scientific of me to not try it out once before, uh, you know, giving it the cold shoulder again. Who knows? Maybe it's much, much better now. I know it's supposed to kill bosses very quickly, especially if you stack it with some damage up and the powder keg. Because I believe the way it works is the powder keg is like a permanent times two to your damage. So it also, uh, it also doubles any damage ups you get, which can make the grenade launcher incredibly powerful in the late game. Scale into oblivion as far as damage goes, which would make it really good for bosses and uh, like most weapons like that that scale to incredibly high damage, actually not very good for um, just, you know, normal rooms because, you know, late game you're killing everything so quickly anyway. They're like having a bomb that does five times the amount of damage as a Gilead has health is not that useful. But, uh, you know, for bo bosses being able to three shot shit is always nice. <clears throat> go. Oh, almost walked a little bit too close to that bomb, I think, but we're fine. Taking a lot more damage than I'm kind of accustomed to on these early floors because uh, I'm not really used to the grenade launcher anymore. <clears throat> and it's also just really hard. Like The grenade launcher puts you in situations where you have less places where you can safely dodge to if something unexpected happens. You know, I, if I shoot a bunch of bombs somewhere and then I have to dodge, then suddenly wherever I shot a bunch of bombs is not a safe place to dodge. So it's, uh, you know, it's a dangerous weapon and it's also just, you know, very difficult to uh, connect with some enemies. <clears throat> Gum's helping out a lot. If I didn't have gum, I would be much more unhappy with this weapon and honestly I would probably just switch to the crossbow immediately because trying to deal with the grenade launcher without gum is really shitty. Floor 1 gum is basically the ideal situation for a uh, dynamite. I would say. Oh, these guys still take three bombs. I thought it only took two. But that's fine. That is going to be the end of this floor. I'm pretty sure we do have enough for the powder keg as well as Adderall, which is actually really, really good. So let's get over there and grab that shit. Get some bunny hopping done under there. Nice stuff. Powder keg, Adderall, good shit. Really good first floor. You know, nothing nothing too expensive. You know, we, we got to spend all of our money but $33 on the first floor, which is really unusual. We had just the perfect combination of cheap and effective items in that store. You know, powder keg and gum, super important. Adderall, a really cheap upgrade that's also really good. You know, you don't want to see, like, a lightning bolt in the first shop because you're not going to be able to afford that shit. We're going to try to get Blowfish. Uh, Sickle and Gilead's gun don't interest me in the least. Blowfish, on the other hand, would be uh, pretty fantastic. A little bit more damage upgrades, or, uh, you know, damage over time for the bombs. <clears throat> it's going to be primarily a boss killer, I think, because uh, the, the uh, you know, we kill, we're, you know, if we're not doing it already, oh my god, lightning bolt on the mini boss, which means that we get it for free, which is great because that is a super expensive item. Okay, here we go, the whale. We gotta just stay away from this guy and stick bombs all over his face. This is gonna be really good compared to that time I tried to fight the whale without gum, I would say. That was really close, actually. But we're totally fine. All right, oh, we actually have one more lector up here. Let's dodge those into the ground, and here's some blubber. Yes, please. We are, you know, decently, we have, we have a decent speed still. We also have 12 health as well as 5 armor. We're doing pretty goddamn well. And I cannot overstate the importance of that lightning bolt. Getting the lightning bolt for free on the second floor is huge because that is normally like a $400 item. Uh, meaning it's a really good candidate for picking up out of the, uh, out of the boss, mini boss room or late game. But uh, yeah, to get it so early without having to deal with the lack of funds that would usually provide, that's big. 
I'm gonna grab the blowfish if if necessary, like I was saying earlier, or if possible, rather. Because it is a great item, it gives you damage over time, but, you know, late game, it's not going to be super useful. It, I think it will still help us with uh, Gilead's for the time being, until we get a little bit more damage. But everything else is like, you know, big deal. But it's a, it's a boss killer, and that's fine with me. So we don't have anything else to buy on this floor, and... You know, spending all of the money you can on things that are vaguely useful is kind of what Paranautical Activity is all about. You don't want to save your money, because the, there's a point pretty early when you start getting enough money to buy everything. So I'm not I'm not going to be picky about whether or not it's a good idea to, uh, to spend $350 on a blowfish. That won't be the most useful ever, but it will still be, you know, perfectly, perfe perfectly serviceable. So with that lightning bolt, we should actually have insane um, fire rate, which again is not that great in normal rooms because you know you want to pick your shots carefully and not accidentally just blow yourself up. But um, again, in bosses, that's going to be huge. But I could really use some damage up because you know with the powder keg, damage up is going to scale so well, or at least I, that's how I think I remember it being explained to me. I could be totally wrong, um, but I talked to Mike about this, and I think that's what he was telling me. Because he, he was giving me his justification for calling the grenade launcher the strongest scaling weapon in the game. Which is, you know, not mathematically wrong, but you have to take into account real world uh, problems like how many hits does it take to kill an enemy. Which is not taken into account in that equation. And is why I think the M14 is still objectively the best scaling weapon in the game. Just because you can... You know, it, it takes advantage of every upgrade. You're never one-shotting anything, so every damage up just makes you do damage faster and faster and faster until you're spiraling out of control. Uh, yeah, there's no, like, you know, the, the grenade launcher has, like, a hard cap. Well, everything does, of, like, how much damage you can do before it stops being useful, but the grenade, la grenade launcher hits that cap, and the M14 doesn't because it works on fire rate rather than, um, you know, just burst damage. I don't know, I've explained this so many times. I just find it uh, an interesting thing to talk about because so many people uh, seem not to understand it when they talk to me about what guns scale well. They're always like, oh man, Gilead's gun scales so well. I'm like, well, yeah, okay, but it's still... You're not going to hit every time with the Gilead's gun. Anyway, I've, I've been over this over and over and over again. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. I like game mechanic talk. It's fun. Even though I'm not particularly great at it. There are definitely people who are much better at sussing out game mechanics than I am. Please hit the guy. I'm not going to hit the guy. I hit the guy! I hit the bones. That was actually a really good uh, uh, <clears throat> grenade snipe on that lecture, if I do say so myself. Are we going to get 350 to pick up the, gr the blowfish? We might not. And if we don't, no regrets. You know, it's not it, it's not an item that would be essential for us. We already have a bunch of great items that are kind of essential for success. You know, the lightning bolt, probably my favorite item in the, ent in the entire game. We're not going to get enough for the blowfish unless it was 300 instead of 350, but I'm pretty sure. Let's check it out. Uh, yep, that is a $350 purchase, and we cannot have it, unfortunately. But that's okay. Like I was saying... Not so great uh, late game. Once we get a couple damage ups and start one-shotting Gileads, that's going to be the end of its usefulness for anything other than bosses, so we'll be fine, and who knows, maybe all that money we saved will uh, have some usefulness on this shop instead of two really expensive items. I would love to pick up rum. Ooh, got stuck under the stairs there. Hate when that happens. <laughs> I'm really surprised uh, I didn't just take, like, four hits from that, but, uh, you know, it worked out. Okay, we got some bomber dudes coming in. Good, one dead. That guy should be dead as well. Perfect. All right, pick up all of our money, and there's over 350 gold right there. If I just had this one room on the previous floor instead of this floor, we would have been able to pick up the blowfish. But you know, that's not this is not the not God's plan for us. Oh God. <laughs> Apparently God instead plans for me to walk into humming bullets a bunch and uh, be humiliated on the internet. That would actually explain a lot about the, ha, where my life has gone. Let's go ahead in here. Still looking for any kind of like relevant room. 
You know, I, I really thought that was going to hit the ceiling. Uh, you know, a shop, a mini boss, a boss room. But uh, for right now, we're just wandering. Again, cannot overstate how excited I would be to have a compass in this game. You know, a Binding of Isaac style. Just here's where shit is. Because that would be super nice. Though it would be kind of overpowered in this game just because of the way the map generation works. Like in Isaac, you, you need the map and the compass to really know where everything is. And that's two separate, you know, not rare items, but not super common items either. It's uh, unusual to have a run with both the compass and the... Oh god, what did that... What hit me? Must have been a homing tier. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> that was really close as well. Oh, there's a lector hanging out over, like, there. That explains a lot. Didn't know he was there. Anyway, there's the boss room. Uh, but yeah, the way, the way the map generation works in this game is just, you know, it's a big square. And there's not going to be a maze to get to a place. In Isaac, if you only have the compass and you see the boss room, you could, like, start going, oh, it's in the top right. We'll just go, like, to the right. And then you, uh, the right path, like, bends downward. And you, uh, you end up having to, like, go up and around. And you've just wasted a whole bunch of time. Because you don't know exactly where to go to get to the boss room. With Paranautical Activity, it's a big square. If you know where the boss room is, you know where the boss room is. You can just walk there, and the map would be all but unnecessary. Or not all but unnecessary, I think it would literally be unnecessary. <laughs> like, it would do almost nothing for you except tell you where the highest chance of finding a room is. You know, where, where a dead end is. But, uh, the, the map should be like a $50 item where it would be totally not worth it unless you have just more money than you know what to do with. But anyway, let's check out this place. We did get a speed upgrade out of that boss, which is always nice. You know, make up for that uh, that blubber we picked up a little bit. Or actually, I think it fully made up for that blubber. We seem to be just as fast as we were, were before that. Jelly- oh! <sighs> Almost took damage to the jellyfish, which would have been silly. There's a damage up. That should be uh, twice as much damage up as normal for the grenade launcher. So I'm excited to see now how much damage we end up doing with this guy. Should be good. Oh right, lava in there, that's why I didn't go there, and I'm glad I didn't, because that mini boss room was kind of tucked away over there, and if I hadn't gone that way then, I probably would have waited until the very end of the level to get back over there. So hopefully we can just find the uh, the shop soon. We do have 655 gold, and uh, pretty much I think once you get past like 500 gold, I consider myself like done collecting gold. I'm never, there's never going to be a situation, by the way, can we like, no. Uh, there's never going to be a situation again when you're like, oh man, I need more gold to buy all of these items in the shop. Like, the getting that much gold at once is a good indicator that uh, you can just start buying with abandon. Just anything you want, just pay for it because your money is going to be useless from now on. It'd be kind of cool for there to be a thing other than shops to do with your money so that, uh, you know, especially late game, like, buying items isn't such a no-brainer. Because right now, there's very little strategy to it. There's another lava room up here. Just kind of checking, checking for shops. There it is. Perfect. Um, yeah, we could definitely pick up flip-flops, by the way. But yeah, there are, there's a lot of situations where I'm like, I don't particularly like this item, but fuck it, it's free. You know, the, the gold costs become completely irrelevant for items. It would be kind of cool for there to be a mechanic, like a Spelunky-like mechanic, where you have to save up 50,000, not necessarily 50,000 of course, but uh, we'll buy both of these by the way. Shield Lover and Blowfish, two great items that go great together. They don't actually have any kind of synergy, but I just like them both. Um, but yeah, like in Spelunky, you have to save up all of that money to go to the black market, pick up the Ankh. It'd be really cool for there to be a similar like secret in uh, Paranautical Activity where you have to you know, save your money, not spend it all on every item, and then if you have a, a certain amount of money and you do some other kind of absurd skill-based feat on the final floor, maybe you can skip the final boss and go to a like a real a real final floor. That would be neat. Just throwing out ideas. It would be kind of a blatant Spelunky ripoff, and that's why I uh, am not a game developer because. Most of my games would probably just be Blade and Ripoffs, but uh, it would be, you know, some something similar to that, something that gives the gamer the same feel without so blatantly ripping off another game would be pretty neat. Just throwing that out there. Because right now, like, I always, every single time, end the game with, like, 2,000 gold. And there's nothing to spend it on late game. 
Alright, here's Poseidon. This guy should not be terribly difficult, especially if I can actually hit him. Kinda, uh, missed him with a lot of bombs, which is unacceptable given how still he stands. That was really easy. Oh! Allowed myself to be hit by a fish at the end there, but yeah, that was crazy easy. That's the trident. I already knew that. I don't know why I walked over to it. Uh, hey, there's a shop right there. Wow. Things are going well. Now we just have to find... Oh, I can... Yeah, see, I can one-shot those uh, Gileads now because of the Blowfish. So this is like a very narrow uh, stretch in which the Blowfish is actually a substantial advantage because it allows me to uh, kill a Gilead in half of the shots. Which is pretty nice. I'm trying to stick these on the ceiling above that guy, but it's kind of difficult. But we did end up killing him. Let's collect all of our money. We're up to 300 and... Oh, Jesus. Thought the room was over. I thought I even saw open doors. I need to get better about recognizing when rooms are actually over. What have we got in here? Winged Foot is a no-brainer. We're not going to need the health box, nor are we going to need the crossbow. That's like the fourth crossbow I've seen this run, by the way. Uh, so now, now we want to find the mini boss room, if at all possible. But I also don't want to wander for like five years to find a mini boss. Oh god, and this room's such a pain in the ass too, and this one has lava. You know what? Fuck it. I, I, just from what I can see, I predict myself losing a lot of health on this floor for something that is unlikely to be useful in the mini boss room. You know, it could be a damage up or like a, um, something really good. But, uh, it could also be just crap. Uh, it could easily be a health box or a bomb box which are just totally unnecessary and I would almost certainly lose spirit hearts on that venture so we're just going to go to the next floor instead cut my losses which I think is something I need to be better about I'm so used to the Isaac mentality of like if I don't get to every important room on every floor I'm throwing the game because it's so important to get all of those items in periodical activity I already have a pretty good run, and I now I just need to get through the game. If I have an opportunity to pick up more items, that's great, but it's unnecessary. <clears throat> it's more important to get through the game quickly and without taking risks. That guy is going to bomb the shit out of me. Okay, we're good. We do have to fight Genghis's with the grenade launcher now, which is going to be an issue. And I think, like, pretty clearly the best strategy with uh, the grenade launcher is going to be like use it for early game switch it out for something better similar to the crossbow like it's a great early game weapon and then later on you know maybe you uh this guy is going to be a pain in the ass later on you switch it for something that's not so terrible i hate genghis's with the grenade launcher a lot. That's probably, Genghis's I think are the main reason that the grenade launcher is not going to scale well into the late game. Just because of those motherfuckers. Because they're so hard to kill with it. Um, let's see here. What are we doing? Oh! Almost went into the, the acidy death room. Let's just go this way. Oh! Get out of there! Duh, I blew myself up. Like a fool. Okay, so those guys both kill, uh, die in one hit. That is going to be the end of this room. Let's grab all, all of our spoils and figure out what we're doing now. That's an acid room, but are there any important rooms next to it is the question. No, I don't see any. That is a dead end as far as I can tell. And that is a mini boss room, so we're definitely going this way. If you see a room, might as well go to it, even though we are at the point where it's better to just rush through the game, I think. And uh, here's another Genghis, that'll be fun. What if I just- oh no! Oh god, that was the worst. I got stuck under the stairs because I was trying to look at the ground to put bombs where the Genghis will be. Ah, oh, I can't believe I didn't hit him. Yeah, we're gonna have to stick him. Uh, if we didn't have gum, like, this would be an impossible challenge. Okay, he's stuck, now we just need to get away from him. Alright, we gotta get rid of this grenade launcher. Like, it, it's gonna straight up kill me <laughs> if, if I keep on trying to kill Genghis with Genghis's with it repeatedly. It is a dangerous, dangerous weapon to be using. <laughs> uh, this guy should be super easy. Never had any trouble with this mini boss. It seems very easy and predictable, and he's surrounded by these little jabroni guys uh, instead of anything, you know, of note. So it's basically just super easy. We got the anchor that lets us uh, bunny hop a little bit more effectively. So I will pick it up. And uh, now we just need to locate the boss room, 
you know, if we find a shop on the way, that's great as well. God, this is... This is the grenade launcher's worst nightmare. Fucking... Uh, Lecters and Genghises, come on, man. Okay. So it's wide open, which means that it shouldn't be too terribly difficult to, uh, to stick these guys. They're not gonna have, like, stairs and shit to weave around, but Jesus. Come on. <laughs> I hate that there's a homing bullet after me because I can't really slow down to let it hit anything. But luckily I'm faster than it. Oh my god. I hate this so much. Please. 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 Alright Mike. If you're watching this, this is why the grenade launcher is a badly scaling weapon. This right here is the exact reason that the grenade launcher is terrible in the late game. That. I know mathematically it scales really well, but that does not make it a an actual good scaling weapon. We're gonna have to go in here because uh, there, this is the only way into the boss room, so we gotta deal with this acid. Oh god, almost blew myself up. Can't believe that bomb didn't do any damage to that guy, but we fixed it. Oh, sniped the Genghis. Good shit. But yeah, like if I had any other weapon really any any other weapon at all Genghis's would not be an issue but fucking grenade launcher is just so hard to hit certain enemies with that it's uh, it doesn't scale well because you know your your damage per second is so bad just because of of accuracy like if you're if you're looking at an RPG and looking at the damage per second of a weapon you have to take into account okay how often does it miss you know if there's an accuracy weight, rating of weapons that's important too you can't just say oh this weapon does the most damage and gets the most damage from additional stats, therefore it's the best. That uh, that guy dropped rum, that's pretty cool. Um, oh, we found the shop as well. Uh, you know, therefore it's the greatest weapon in the game if it misses like 90% of the time. And that's the situation we have here. We're definitely going to buy poison bombs as talking, so I wasn't focusing on what was in the shop. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's the same thing in a skill-based game. If I... You know, I can't just go, oh, I can just assume I'll hit everything every single time with this weapon, therefore it's the greatest scaling weapon in the game. Because that's, you know, that's only half the story. If I can be honest with myself and expect myself to miss at least half of my bombs, then we have to give it uh, half of the damage per second rating. Oh god. <laughs> this is this is a nightmare of a room for the grenade launcher, by the way. I came in here for the, uh, for the mini boss room and hopefully it ends up playing- oh god! Thought I stuck one of those guys, but I didn't. But we're okay. We are all okay. Still don't have uh, flip flops, so these floors are kind of super difficult. I'm really hoping there aren't Genghis's hiding. There are not, thank God. <laughs> if there were Genghis's hiding, this would have been another fucking yakety sax adventure. Just fucking running around in a circle trying to hit them. But uh, you know, it is. It has very high accuracy on uh, on bosses, which I guess you could say in RPG terms have very low evasion. You know, bosses tend to be very slow, very large, and you just hit them super easily. So you don't have to worry about the disadvantages of the grenade launcher, and it uh, can be assumed to have you know nearly a 100% hit rate. So it's really good there. Okay, we're gonna kill these guys with one bomb each. We've got bombers in the middle, but I think uh, if I just move in circles, we'll be fine. Those guys are all dead. Those guys are dead. Good shit. Really proud of everybody here. Let's go ahead and pick up all of this gold, which is completely unnecessary, but who knows? You know, I walk into the shop, maybe there's two super expensive items in there. And also, I just really like gold. And it's so, like, satisfying to pick up now that it just, like, flies into you. It's amazing what a difference little things like that make. Okay, nothing over there. Nothing over there, let's just go this way. Really hoping to run into the boss room soon. This is the exact same room by the way, which uh, I like. This room is super easy with the grenade launcher. Just hit everything once and they are all dead. Nice, nice. And what do we got over here? Nothing still, but uh, this is our only new room to go through, so let's do it. And what have we got over here? Mostly a dead end over there. Some money and bombs. What do we got over here? I see the shop two rooms away, so let's definitely go this way. Oh no! 
That was... <laughs> that was a critical fumble on my part. Okay. Try to snipe the Genghis. Uh, he's stuck. What happened there? Okay, that was weird. Genghis just kind of gets stuck under these platforms, I guess. He's a very confused man. We go this way, there's the shop. We're gonna have to deal with acid. Oh no, it's this room. Oh no, it's this room. Oh no, it's it's this room. Oh fuck. Come on. Just stick the Genghis. Oh no. Okay. Oh no, the bomb died with him. I had him. I had them both. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Just please. This is not worth it. This is not worth it. No! 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 Oh, fuck that room. God damn it, I got hit by my, one of my own moms as well. Fuck the shit out of that room. I hate it so much. Alright, we got health box, scissors, and bomb box. None of those. Not a single one of those is even vaguely useful. We're gonna pick up health box because, you know, we are missing one heart. <sighs> Why not? Scissors. Why? Yeah, sure. We're, we're never, never, ever going to run out of money again. It's just not a thing that's gonna happen. So, that was really unfortunate. God damn that fucking room. And the the worst part is like, if we had flip flops, that would have just been like nothing. You know, that room wouldn't have wouldn't have mattered. Ah, uh, <laughs> I hate it. All right. Where is the boss room? Please, God, give me the fucking boss room. That is a dead end. Uh, I guess this is going to be the most effective uh, route here. Give us the most new rooms to check out. Okay, those guys are stuck, I believe. Good. God damn it, lectors and uh, and Genghis is the worst, the worst combination in the world. Is there still a Genghis in this room? No, there isn't. He just died from collateral damage somewhere along the line. Thank God for Shield Lover. We're getting a shit ton of armor drops to replace all of the armor I lost in that one stupid fucking room. I hate that room so much. Nothing in there, really. And... Okay, so we got two really shitty uh, angles of attack here, but we're going to come in here. Good, that guy's dead. And uh, it seems like enemies actually die to axes, so these guys probably won't last too terribly long if I had to guess. Good. Uh, do I see any spirit hearts? No, then we're just gonna get out of this room. Should have checked if there was acid in here, but at the same time, didn't really want to deal with uh, getting hit by an axe while I was checking the room out. And uh, you know, it all worked out fine. We're all good. What have we got? Boss room, thank god. Okay. Oh. Jesus, that was a that was a poor route to take through there. Ooh, god damn it. Okay, took a lot of damage in this room. God damn it. Okay, a lot of stupid damage in that room. I uh, lost all of my armor out of just fumbles, basically. Uh, we got two hearts in here if we need them. What do we got in the boss room? Giant Spider-Man. Spiga. With all of the egg sacs. Oh god. Okay, I'm gonna destroy all the eggs. Please, God. Okay, we're all good. Now we just destroy all the uh, the spiders on the ground. Our fire fire rate is really substantial with the grenade launcher, but it's just like not that useful because we have to plan our shots so carefully most of the time. But for bosses, Jesus, take them down in an instant. Pick up a little bit of damage up here. We are down to zero armor, which is really bad. Hopefully, we just get to the boss soon on this floor. That's all we can hope for. Uh, we're gonna start getting whittled down pretty quickly here. I see the boss room. It's two rooms away here. Oh god. Just kill myself with my own bomb. Good. Dude did a sweet tactical roll. I really want to get a better look at these guys, but it's tough. Uh, because they spend so much time shooting at your face. But uh, they, they have some fucking cool animations as far as I can tell. Definitely worth going through an axe room to get through the to the boss room so easily. Please just snipe that guy perfect. Oh, didn't mean to come in here, actually. It was just uh, casually backing up against the wall. But anyway, should definitely be firing at maximum speed against this boss. 
I think we got this. I think we're gonna win here. Despite the uh, the nightmares that we faced. And I'm just gonna focus uh, the final boss here. I forget her name, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, Skeleto was not an issue really. Alright. Uh, there's probably a spider left somewhere. There he is. That is the end of Paranautical Activity. Again, I beat the game with dynamite. Uh, I'm starting to see what uh, what Mike is saying when he says that every single character is OP because uh, my my success rate was definitely much less than this before this patch. And uh, these characters are fun. I'm enjoying it. Beat the game with the uh, grenade launcher. Still don't like it very much. I still don't think it's a good weapon, but you know it's doable. You just need to. Uh, you need to kind of avoid rooms where it's terrible. We only had a few rooms that were truly awful with the grenade launcher. Uh, chief among them, that one acid room with all the Genguses in it. Still kind of surprised I made it out of that as well as I did. Uh, I thought that was going to just end the run by putting me too low on health. But, you know, we made it to the final boss quick and uh, managed to beat the game as a result. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Paranautical Activity. Really enjoying this. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy the next episode because we are going to be playing as Gordon, who has a hook. And, and I'm probably just going to call that guy Pudge from this point forward. But uh, anyway, that'll be exciting. People have told me that he's by far the worst character. He starts with no health and he starts with the shittiest weapon. That seems like a bad combination. But we'll try it out. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.